are the nine and four. Welcome to the library, where, in this entry, we're going to take a look at one of the many mysteries of the realms. A quandary that most in the realms have not even fully considered, if at all it has crossed the minds of the average citizen. But one that has been a matter of debate, worry, and studious investigation by the more proactive of the divine. The mystery of the missing gods of the ancient empire. Perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and new guests of the library, I am the recorder, and we begin our look with a bit of background and history. As was discovered by the first teams of explorers and adventurers to make contact with the ancient empire, the various planets of the empire undergo a regular series of contests and challenges, competing each clan against not only each other, but having to overcome any number of outside challenges and obstacles. The reward for excellence in these trials is elevation for the entirety of the clan to a better and more valuable holding on a more developed and advanced world within the ancient empire. Conversely, the cost for poor performance was to be sent to a lesser developed and supported world in kind. Unfortunately, due to the events of the soon to erupt Scriptorum War, in-depth details and explanation of this function of the ancient empire society was not something that was well known or understood beyond the highest ranks or those hunters who took direct part in the events that occurred. Even to those individuals, however, information was incomplete, and what was known was a matter of grave concern for the security of the realms. From the full and unredacted reports regarding this series of rituals, the ancient empire stratified their worlds into nine tiers, with less but more developed and bountiful worlds at the top, easily the match of any modern realm's world but with lesser advanced worlds on each lower tier, but more of each. While this was a strange and confusing way of running an empire to those from Jemimar, the real concern came from those clans that found a decisive victory at the highest tier of their contests. And this was due to the fact that according to legend, those clans so victorious were to be granted apotheosis and become divine. Coupled with the various known stories and legends of the Empire depicting Jamamar and her people as neglectful and antagonistic, having left the Empire and her people to die alone in the cold of space when Jamamar vanished and abandoned them. The thoughts of clans of godlike beings all gathered and raised to their power for the purpose of exacting revenge, or justice as the Empire might see it. And it is a matter of concern and ongoing investigation, even a thousand years after the Scriptorum War's conclusion. At least for those in the higher echelons of power, as the combination of the Empire's isolationist policies, as well as the efforts of those who are aware of the danger, has ensured that while some of the details of this ascension of clans is out there, the fact that godhood could result is not well understood or even discussed by the average realm citizen or scholar. This is good, as even conservative estimates places the potential number of elevated gods in the hundreds of thousands, if not easily into the millions. This, on its own, raises many questions as to the fate of those so elevated, as any collection of gods that large would have surely made their presence known, especially when the objects of their wrath, those they had been elevated to eventually battle with to defend their empire, were present. Yet, during the entirety of the Scriptorum conflict, not once was any divine being noted or mentioned outside of the Scriptorum members themselves. This disparity was not only noted by the forces of the realm, but by the citizens of the Empire as well, 
and it is thought that this is one of the factors that led to the eventual peace with Jamamar and the rejection of the Scriptorum by the citizens of the Empire. Despite the end of the war, and the induction of the ancient empire as part of the greater realms, these raised and elevated clans have still never been located, nor has any true understanding of what happened to them ever been made. The Scriptorum's place of power, where the details and perhaps the secrets of this mystery are thought to exist, if they exist anywhere, is far too filled with traps and countermeasures for even the gods to have thoroughly explored it. Attempts are still occasionally made, with progress occasionally achieved. However, attempting to rob the tomb of the wayward children of the librarian is a task that tests and defeats even the most skilled of the divine or their agents. This does not mean there are no theories or suggestions as to the fate of these missing gods. Among these ideas, the leading one is that instead of ascension, the clans were instead used as some sort of fuel or other power source for the greater ritual that took place across the Empire, thus eliminating the most powerful and largest threats to the Scriptorum's power and authority within the populace and the Empire, all while ensuring the continued survival of the Empire as a whole. Some think that only the weakest of the elevated were used thus and those that remained after were elevated and then placed into some sort of stasis or storage for the expected war against Jamamar. The fact that they were nowhere to be seen during the war has done much to eliminate this as a mainline suggestion in the centuries that have passed since the conflict. Other ideas and theories abound as to the fate of these clans, but most are in alignment that they were most likely either sent beyond the confines of the cluster, or used in some grisly fashion as yet another means for the Scriptorm to maintain and expand their power. Still, a small group of adventurers and agents of gods are still on the hunt for any answers to this mystery as if even a handful of divine entities still exist from this process with the hate of Jamamar in their hearts, the threat to the realms could be grave indeed. After recent information discovered by the Hunters of the Realms, it became known that while the process of ascension had and still does occur roughly every 10 years, the contests at the highest levels no longer occur as they once did. No more are clans pulled into the unknown for victory on the crown world of the Empire, and it is thought that this is due to the absence of the Scriptorum. This leads even more credence to the thought of a grisly end to the lost clans, as if the system was, as taught, meant to create a force defending the Empire from Jamamar. But why was it not set up to be self-perpetuating in that case? What was future classified was that according to their own records, the ancient empire knows of no less than 1,000 clans elevated over the long years of their separation from the home realm, as each clan could range from a few dozen to just about a thousand people each, this has brought the degree of potential threat posed to stunning clarity. Of course, steps are in place to respond should these lost gods return, with various divines and their agents on the watch for any signs of this possibly happening. Unfortunately, this is the sum and total knowledge known to both the gods and those familiar with the situation. This threat has been a matter of discussion and contemplation for even Her Majesty Genevieve Nodokir, Empress of the Gods, and she has spent significant efforts to find the full truth of the matter once and for all. How these efforts will resolve is unknown, but most hope that she is successful and finds the answers that are required for the future of the realms to be assured. While the mightiest force ever assembled in the history of the realms, it is a true and honest question if even the totality of the V's, their descendants, and relations combined 
could hope to find victory in a contest against these missing gods, should they number anywhere near the number suggested by the evidence at hand. With that, I am going to bring this entry of Intro to the Realms to a close. Hopefully, you now have a better understanding of one of the many mysteries of the realms. A concern for gods and mortals alike, if only the mortals were truly aware of it. It has been the aim of the divine to never have the mortals of the realm realize or know this danger presented, as to not undercut the fragile and tenuous peace in the cluster between the realms of Jamamar and the ancient empire who is now one of them. Even those mortals of the empire, who in days long gone thought the elevated clans would return in the event of a Jamamar arrival, are mostly ignorant as to the sheer number or potential of those now missing clans. And with their lack of arrival at the appointed and proper time, think of the lost clans as things of myth and legend mostly. Perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and of course, new guests to the library. I, as always, want to thank you for your time, interest, and of course, support of the Realms and Griffin's Library. It means the world and the realms to me. Thank you. Now, until you next make your way back to the library for your next entry of Intro to the Realms, I, as always, have been the recorder. And by the nine and four, be well, take care of yourselves, and each other. If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.